Everyone, this is George Kroos. This is another episode of Three Questions with the awesome Stacey Roshan. See? Soundboard stuff. Stacey. Stacey and I, I have actually known Stacey literally forever in Twitter years. I don't know. It's kind of like dog years, right? Like Twitter years, this is its own thing. And we were talking before we got on the podcast and we've never met, which is the weirdest thing because I feel like I've known you forever, but we've actually never been in the same room together at the same time. So it is awesome to have you here. So awesome to be here. <laughs> so Stacy is an absolutely uh, incredible leader, uh, educator. She does presentations all over the world. And what's really cool, she actually wrote a book called Tech with Heart. I got my own copy of it. Thank you very much, Stacy. I appreciate that. Uh, and it is definite must read. And one of the things I really have always appreciated about you, and we'll talk more about this on the other podcast, is really kind of how you really kind of mesh, you know, personality and technology. And I think a lot of times it's kind of, it's like technology almost took the personality of school. I, a lot of people don't know this movie. I used to be very anti-tech because I felt it was kids just like in screen and totally disconnected and not like being around the world with them. And, I, and then I started seeing like, how can we utilize this in different ways? And I think you do great job so before we even get to the three questions like tell us just a, give us a little we'll talk more about in the other podcast but just give us a little snippet about your book tech with heart which is linked down below thanks um my biggest goal is really that how can we use technology to become more compassionate in the classroom to empower every student's voice and really hear from all the different types of learners in our classroom. Um, and to me, it's all about building relationships. And technology has changed the game in terms of how I'm able to connect with my students and get to know them on a really personal level. So that's it for me. And I can't, I can't wait to talk more about that because I think a lot of people think it's the exact opposite. Like, you know, that we're like disengaged as humans. I think you, that can happen if you're not intentional about the way that you actually use it. And so I know that's why I appreciate your work so much. So let's get into the questions. You've always yeah. inspired me. I was so pumped to have you on the podcast. I was so excited that you're going to be on here. So I've been looking forward to this all week. Um, so um, when you think about, you've inspired so many people. So like who's inspired Stacy? So when you actually think about all the teachers that you had, maybe teachers you worked with, who is a teacher that really inspired you and why? Yeah. So I can't not shout out my mom, who is a teacher and a math teacher and has inspired so much of what I do and who I am. But I'm going to focus on the one teacher. I actually talk about her in my book, too. And just she wait, was just wait, Stacy. Just wait. Mm -hmm. You're not going to talk. You, that was the mention of your mom. So Stacy's mom, if you are listening, I have to do this because Stacy hates this soundboard. <laughs> I didn't want Stacey's mom not to get her own special sound horn. Oh, thanks. Sorry. She'll appreciate sorry, that. Sorry. She'll listen. Oh, I was like, that's the best. <laughs> and I realized that your mom is, there's a song written about her now. I just realized that when I said, I was like, oh, Stacey's mom. Yeah. That's who that's it is the whole that. time. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now, now it's just wrecked. Now it's going to be Stacey <laughs> Roshan's mom. So now that's going to be in my head. I'm just going to add yep. that one next word. Sorry, I, I apologize, but I had to, you need to add that sound yeah, effect shout, to your soundboard. Shout out to mom. Seriously, I love my mom. So my mom has had a, such an impact. So I would. Yep. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. I apologize. <laughs> no. I had to get um, in there for your mom. Yeah. So my um, AP calculus teacher, she really has inspired a lot of who I've become as a teacher. And I didn't even realize it at the time. And one of the things that was just crazy to me was um, there was this one test that I took and I didn't finish the test at all. And, you know, I had never experienced this from any other teacher ever. She knew me well enough that what I turned in that test at the end of class and I was like wrecked from it. Um, but of course like, I didn't show it. I didn't say anything. I didn't even know you could like go to your teacher and talk to your teacher. Um, it was just the way that school was for me. And then the next day when I came in, she just kind of sat me down and was like, Hey, I know something was going on. I want you to finish these problems. And it was just like, wow. Um, you know, That's like she knew me well enough and she just gave me that opportunity. And I was, I was having a really off day. You know what? I had stayed up too late studying for that test. And my mind was like mush. I also 
always had trouble finishing tests on time. I didn't even, you know, back then I didn't even know it was a thing that maybe you needed some more time to take a test and that was an okay thing. Um, but that really inspired as I became a teacher to just remember, you know, that really human aspect of like, there's never a black and white of like, a kid doesn't finish something, they get a zero, or they don't turn something in on time and they get a zero, like, ask what's going on, um, and mm -hmm. see what's going on. And I think that is something that I did my first year teaching that was like one of the biggest keys to, to success. Um, and so that teacher just has reminded me over and over and over again, you know, teach, teach with some heart. <laughs> you know, it's coming. There you go. A little shout out to your AP calculus teacher. Hey, this is actually, this is a really great you know thing to talk about too. Uh, we had, um, we had like a no zero policy in our school and it's kind of funny because that's kind of like controversial. And we had to really kind of have a conversation with it. And maybe the no zero was actually not an accurate title of it because it was like basically communicated. If a kid literally knows nothing, then they get a zero. Like if they know nothing about the subject, but let's say they do a test and you know, they understand the content or they are having an off day. Is there other ways you can actually get that information of them? And then someone will say, well, what, you know, the, how does that teach work ethic? Right? So like a kid can just quit on the test, blah, blah, blah. And so we actually had two separate reporting systems. So we're like, here's what the kid actually understands about the curriculum. And maybe, and then on the, a separate thing, it was actually like reporting on, you know, here's some stuff that we noticed with, you know, how they work and et cetera, like how they learn. And so we separated the two, right? It wasn't used as a punishment. So I, I really appreciate that story because the teacher knew that you knew more than you were able to exhibit in that moment. And instead of punishing you for having a bad day, she gave you a different opportunity. So I, I just love that. I think it's a great lesson, uh, especially in assessment that we often talk about because yeah, like, like I'm actually, if you, if, if a kid literally knows zero, then give him, then I'm okay. Give him a zero. Right now. Do kids know zero? What's up? Probably not. But that, that was kind of the point of the conversation. Right. So like, is there a different ways you can get that information out and maybe, you know, honoring kids different ways that they not only learn, but share the learning. So I, I, I love that. So, um, you are currently, uh, in a school that you've been in for what 15 years you told me before like it's been there yeah. for a while that's like yeah, that's a long that's like did you I, I gotta ask this before you start did you like were you on there like did you start twitter when you're at that school like i'm trying yeah. to think was twitter a thing 15 years ago it must have like just started right that's pretty cool i, I started it like three years into my teaching journey well, that's that's so that is so cool it took me a lot took me a lot longer to get into it than my career but <laughs> So when you think about the administrators that you've had, or maybe administrators you had as a student, you know, as a, as a faculty member, who is an administrator that really stuck out to you and why? And if you say your mom, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to hit the air horn again. I'm going to drop the air horn. Uh, I haven't had that many different administrators because I've been at the same school um, mm -hmm. this whole time. But, you know, like there's several things that I would say that really have stood out with the administrators that I've worked with. And one of them has really been my tech director, um, Jamie Dickey. And he has he always like told me when you are starting in this role, when I started as a tech coordinator at my school, that don't ever just ask somebody like, what are you trying to do? So like, and then they name a tool, right? So like, don't ever just say like, you know, how are you going to use Flipgrid in your class? Start with the, what the learning goal is. Start with like backward tracking. Cause they're always going to come to you saying like, oh, I saw you send out a tip about Flipgrid. I want to use Flipgrid today. But right. if you don't understand what that learning goal was, you're never going to provide the best solution. And I think that has been like, so key, um, you know, I just was able to do that from day one in my role because he told me that simple message. And so mm -hmm. I can't tell you, I mean, more times than not, it, it is the case where somebody comes to me and says, like, I want to use Flipgrid for this. And I'm like, well, what are you trying to do? They tell me what they're trying to do. And we're like, mm, let's reimagine that. And right. I just think that's one of the most important things for anybody who's in the tech world, the tech coaching world. It's like, you got to start with the why. That's, that's such great advice because I think a lot of times 
and I actually, because you and I, you and I have kind of like not been in the same space at the same time, but I know we've kind of overlapped a lot of the conferences we've gone to. And then I think about like the 50 tools in an hour. And then it almost confuses people because they're like, they're trying to fit the tool in to the curriculum. And I think that sometimes it's overwhelming. Sometimes it's really great to know a few things and then look at the curriculum and then do this as opposed to know a hundred things. Cause you, if you know a hundred things, you know, no things to be honest with you. And so I, I just love that approach because it is kind of understanding that aspect, unless the, you know, the curriculum is learn PowerPoint, I guess, right. Then that's a totally different thing. But, but that is an aspect. So I love that. So it's Jamie Dickey, right? Jamie Dickey. Yep. Shout out. There you go. All right. But there, that being said, this Roadcaster Pro is the best tool and I can fit it into any curriculum. Just so you know, my soundboard, I can fit into anything. I will find a way, right? This is the one tool I actually would take that advice on, right? Because it and is awesome. That brings you so much joy <laughs> and like so authentic fun. joy. Hey, like that is part of the game. Know yourself right. and know your personality. That's what I talk about in my book all the time. I'm like, know your style, know right. your strengths. This zone it. Get you a relationship that is like I have a relationship with my Roadcaster Pro because I just feel more and more love every time I use it. I'm not saying get you, Stacy. I'm saying I'm saying that as a general. I'm trying to yeah. be I'm trying to be hip and cool by saying this stuff. All right, last question. All right. If you look back in all of your years of teaching and you could go back and talk to Stacy Roshan in the very first year, what advice would you give to yourself now? I don't know if I'm allowed to do this with this question, but um, I feel like my first year teacher self could actually remind me and teach me a lot of things. Ooh, you because, flipped that question. I like it. Well, because when I went into teaching, I actually studied economics and I was in economic consulting for a short amount of time for like a little over a year. And I was really unhappy. And I had tutored all growing up. My mom was a math teacher. I, I kind of always wanted to teach, but you know, maybe we go a little bit against what like our parents do or whatever it is. And I just didn't go with teaching, but it always like was there for me. And then I found this job. It was like the perfect thing, perfect timing. And I went into that job thinking it was probably going to be temporary because I had studied economics. Like I was an economist and I just wanted something that was like going to bring me joy and happiness. And I said to myself, like, I don't care how much money I'm making this year. All I want is to be happy and to do something that really brings me joy. And I feel like I'm doing good. And my first year teaching, I had never taught before. I was teaching um, <laughs> three different high level classes in the middle of the year. I ended up with a fourth different prep. Um, and I, I was teaching the highest level math class. I was teaching an, an honors algebra two class. I was teaching a programming class that I didn't even know, but they, that's what they needed at the school. Mm -hmm. And there was so much work. I was working all the time, but I loved it. I loved it. And I really was able to connect with my students. And I was just so happy because I wasn't like, I felt like I wasn't trying to like achieve any next best thing. I was just trying to do what felt right in that moment. And I was really leading with that, like, what is bringing me joy? And I had an amazing first year. You know, I like, I like, I, I think this is a, this is a, I don't, I don't know how often you blog. This would be a great blog post because I think, like, as I thought about your question, like how often do we, would our like first year teacher selves might be a little bit disappointed with us now in some ways, you know what I mean? Like some of the stuff, like I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. And then we can check out, right. We can be disgruntled. And it maybe it's like, because we become a little bit realist or whatever. But I think a lot of times, um, that, that enthusiasm that we have, that excitement of what we want to do, do we lose track of that? So I, 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 you totally took away my question and you made it way better. I love, I loved your answer on that. That was absolutely awesome. So, um, if you are, are watching now or listening somewhere, Please check out Stacy. Um, you can see her Twitter is at, at BuddyXO. Check out her book, Tech with Heart. Uh, she is an absolutely wonderful educator, but better human being. Just spending a little time with her. She's absolutely incredible. And shout out to Stacy's mom. So 
which is now and now that's forever going to be stuck in my head that song is going to be stuck in my head the whole podcast so i'm sorry it's about okay. that i'm sure your mom i don't know if your mom's heard that too right so anyways every, thank you so much for listening stacy thank you so much for being here absolutely amazing can't wait to talk to you more 